Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the project 3 that we are building. This is a password generator project. I showed you earlier what we are building in the previous video in case you haven't done that, check that. And in the meantime, you are there, just hit that subscribe button as well. This is super, super important for us. So in this project, uh, as we have seen yes, uh, about in the previous video, what we are building, we have a lot of packages that I wanted to introduce to you. Now, as we build the projects and as we build the mobile apps, there's a lot of help that we take from those NPM packages. And that's a common thing. Everybody does that. And in this project, we're using like a lot of them. But I don't want to introduce all of these packages at once to you because it will be overwhelming for you as well as that doesn't deliver the knowledge the way how I want it to deliver to you. So what we're going to do is I'll introduce these packages one by one and we'll be installing them as we need them. Still itchy throat, but we can we can continue. All right, so this is the app that I have loaded up. Again, just like always, I had to come up into the Android and have to create this uh, locale files. It is somewhere here. A little bit difficult to find, yet here it is. Locale.properties, so I always have to go through with that. Maybe you also have to go through with that, but that's totally okay and totally fine. Let's go into app.tsx. And uh, there's so much of the things going on in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply remove everything from here uh, to make it a kind of a basic app. So let's remove everything and we're going to say RNFS. There we go. Uh, looks better. And we're going to just save this. And let's see. There we go. App. Absolutely beautiful. Now the package that I want to introduce you in this particular video is this one. This is a really interesting package and as you can see from the weekly downloads, it's a pretty like crazy, insanely popular package that we have. What it does, it's kind of a light version of a Lodash. Uh, Lodash was a really popular package, but it was so heavy, so clunky that nowadays nobody likes to use it. But there are times when you want to use packages like Yup, it saves a lot of time to you for the validation. Now we saw earlier that one of the goal that we are accomplishing in this particular project is that we want to have numbers as the input and only numbers, we need to verify that. We cannot have strings or anything. And Yup is going to help us to do so. Now surely you can write the code JavaScript code to simply verify that. But in the longer run, for such of the complex projects and schemas, this is super helpful. So we'll be using this package. The installation is pretty simple. We can just simply go ahead and say npm install yep. I'll copy this. And you can see this is how it is being used. I'll show you a better way of using it, but this is completely fine. You can go ahead and use the documentation here and can validate uh, dates, website strings, URL, email, whatever pretty much you need. They have a package and a checker for that and you can go ahead and install that and check that so let me go ahead and first install this so we're going to go ahead and uh, let me paste this let me minimize this also so npm install yup and we're going to be installing that and usually after such installation you actually need to restart the project so what i'll do is i'll close the metro builder i'll restart it in the next video again all right now we can we don't need it that much okay so now the yup is installed, we obviously want to use it. And in this entire project, I'll shorten down the videos in the functionality wise. So in this one, we'll just see that how the yup is actually being used. All right, so first let's go ahead and import the yup. So these are all for the form validation. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark them as form validation. And first we're importing yup. There are a couple of ways how you can import yup. The most common one that you're gonna see is uh, import asterisk as uh, yup yep from yep you can also go ahead and use the package that we saw so you can go ahead and use this format as well maybe you need to check just for string or interface or anything uh, you can directly kind of a destructure this that the syntax we have but if you want to bring everything up uh, you can use this syntax it's totally up to you and whatever you like so that is all what we have now moving on uh, we obviously want to have a password schema. It's not a really big schema. We just want to validate a number itself. So we're going to validate that just outside the app. We don't want to do it inside because maybe later on you want to pass it on to somebody else as well. So let's just call this one as const and we're going to call this one as password uh, schema. And the way how we use the yup package is simply go ahead and say yup. And it has a lot of objects in it. So we're going to go ahead and say object. And then you can go ahead and define the shape of the object. So 
it works like this and in the shape you can ask it whether you are validating the strings and all of that so this is again an object hit and enter here and then you can simply go ahead and define your properties so in this case i'll just define a property which is going to be password length because the only validation that i have is the password length so how do we validate it now assuming that the password length is what you want to validate with the password schema you simply go ahead and call the yup yup this is the syntax of a yup and you simply go ahead and say hey i want to validate for a number similarly you can go ahead and validate for string and other things as well but in this case i want to validate for number and you just validate it like that exactly now once you understand this syntax this exact knowledge is repeatable and you can reuse that for validation of strings and others as well i'll show you that again on to the docs as well notice here it's a user schema uh, whatever the schema you are validating uh, it's an object since we didn't actually directly destructure it we call it as yup so that's why i have to call it as yup dot object and then inside that we have this shape and everything so in this you can validate name age there are a couple of more examples as well in case you want to try this out so there's a lot of ways how you can do it but I think this has given you enough of knowledge that you can go ahead and work on with that. Now, further down this, you can actually chain on a couple of more properties. It will definitely validate for number, but you can go ahead and say that I want this number to be a minimum of something or a maximum of something. For example, I want that this number should be minimum length of four. And if the four is not there, then I can provide a customized error message as well. So, for example, I'll just say should be a min of four characters something like this uh, similarly oops command z similarly we can go ahead and tell it that there can be a max as well you guessed it obviously so let's just say we don't support anything above 16 and we can say it should be uh should be a maximum of should be max of 16 characters something like that now, not only that, we can also make it absolutely required as well. So there is a property here. You can go ahead and say there is required and obviously it doesn't take any of this number as a parameter. It simply says that this is a required field. So something like that. Length is required. So this is all what you need to understand for this particular video that how it works. It's really simple. Let me summarize this. Yup is a package that is used for validation. You obviously don't need to use it. You can just write validation with the core JavaScript on your own. But you will eventually realize that these packages are very common in the production grade and people use them. Yup has a lot of ways of bringing them into your project. This is one of the common way you can definitely go ahead and destructure it and bring out only the ones that you need. If you are not destructuring it, then you can simply call the yup because we have imported it as yup. Then we have object and inside the object, we can define the shape of our schema. For example, in this, we are just having one property, which is password length. So wherever we are going to use this password length, yup will automatically go ahead and perform some of the validation on it. For example, in the number, uh, it will check whether it is number or not. And further, we have chained on a couple of more validations or parameters. In case you have any time worked with something like mongoose or something, you might be knowing that it is similar. And yes, this is very much similar to the mongoose as well. So that's all what we'll be doing in this one. Uh, we just wanted to talk about yup. Eventually, we have a couple of more form validation uh, packages that we'll be talking about. So that will come up later on in the next video. I hope you have enjoyed this. You already hit that subscribe button. If not, go ahead and hit that. Again, a big shout out for Hashnode for sponsoring this series. Go ahead and write an in-depth article about the use case and usage of Yup on Hashnode and share it uh, with us on our Discord server. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.